My name is Alberto. Um, that's what's written here. So yeah, and um, this is a presentation on Fluent D. Fluent D was something I came in contact with when I started at uh, the place I currently work at. This was after my first week in which I actually SSH into a box and uh, managed to actually nuke it from orbit. So. Uh, good start for my first week of work, uh, which I honestly thought I was fired because I actually blasted it. Like, after I was done, you couldn't get in, period. And that was that. I recovered, but uh, I think uh, purgatory uh, in IT seems to be like, I mean, when people want to punish you for your misdeeds, they say, hey, set up uh, some logging thing for us here. <laughs> So, yeah, purgatory meant that, and I was trying to figure out how to do it. Seems three guys before me actually went through that. I mean, they were, none of them were there anymore. I wonder why. And so, yeah, that's how I came with, uh, in contact with it. Uh, it was uh, two years or so ago. I do not remember. I honestly would rather forget since what, uh, the little detail I just mentioned. And, uh, but um, a friend of mine, uh, one of our board members, hello Wyatt, uh, asked about it and um, I decided to make a presentation on it. It's gonna be very quick because uh, this thing can get uh, really fancy really quick. I mean, it does a lot. Most people that uh, ever try to do some research on that, uh, they understand that the main problem with logging is it's all over the place. And uh, FluentD is, um, to put a very long story short, an aggregator, basically send everything to it. And from there, you can parse, you can rearrange, you can organize, and then you can have it uh, whatever else you want it to be. So for example, send it to FluentD and uh, send it to some fancy, uh, let's say, Graphene or something for uh, graphing or um, What's the one everybody likes? Um, Elasticsearch, and there is another thing uh, there to like do whatever. I mean, there are many ways to skin that cat. I am a simple man. I have simple desires. I am fine doing grab and uh, a tailing and uh, just, you know, um, I'm not that sophisticated, which is all fine. All I know is that uh, Grafana we expand it long enough and it crashes which is hilarious. The other day, a friend of mine was showing me some cool graphs. I'm like, no, but we need to see a little further behind. Can't do. Why? Oh no, it runs out of memory, crashes everything. I'm like, this is a fantastic thing. I love it. So yeah, uh, simple people like simple things. Um, you can keep that in mind. And uh, now remember, as I always say, I am clueless, I'm dumb. And um, if you follow my advice, it's on you. I, if you get out of it alive, try not to hate me. And if you do well, I told you so. Okay, so yes, like I said, it's an open source data collector for unified logging layer, which is a very fancy way of saying it's where you drop all the stuff. And um, again, allows you to unify data collection and consumption for a better use and understanding of data. Yeah, if you have everything in one place, hopefully, and keyword here being, hopefully, I have a little anecdote to share soon. It will be there when you need it. So I bought the parts that are interesting. It's unified logging layer and unified data collection and consumption. Main point is you have a fleet. All the logs are in each individual box. Toss them in a single place so you can at least grab all them in a single spot if you're looking for something, for example, or not. But I mean, anyone who um, knows how most distributions set up uh, system D, log D, oh my God, D, whatever it's uh, the name they picked this week knows that uh, they are not persistent. Is that different in any distro? As far as I understand, most of them have logs that are not persistent. Uh, journal D is persistent by default, I think. You can easily set it to not persistent. I think it's the other way around. Oh, okay. Depends on the distro, then. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's my idea, is that uh, we, we had a few incidents with that, but um, your experience may vary. But in other words, uh, ideally, we would rather not rely on that. 
And um, now I'm a simple man. I like simple things and I really don't care. Like, I mean, my needs don't uh, warrant that. The people I work with, they're way smarter than I am. And more often than not, they don't care too. They are happy doing the needful. If we need anything fancy, we can take it there. There are many tools with FluentD to do that, but that's not what I'm gonna show. We don't, I mean, it takes a lot longer. And also um, the 80, 20 rule states that um, this is something you can do really quick and get a lot of benefit uh, to your infra or whoever it is that you're working with. And for everything else, you can always take your time. So I won't, I'm lazy, I don't care, really. Or are we lazy? I don't think we are lazy, because like I said, if you can go to a single spot and get everything there, assuming you were smart and got a box that's reasonably reliable, try not to use an SSD, especially a cheap one, because they die, ask me how I know. Uh, yeah, especially, and they tend to die in fun times. That was before my vacation last year, the very day before. So instead of sleeping to travel, I was actually redeploying a few things that were on the box that died, including my email server. And uh, well, fun times, so do not. Yeah, have something reasonably reliable. Drop your logs there. And um, in other words, in the event of, um, if something happens that takes it off, you, you, you want to know that things are really serious for that to be down, like, um, but uh, that shouldn't be too hard. And uh, being tax-based, at least in my opinion, they're always there for you. So you will be able to address reliability, something that um, often comes with simplicity, in my humble opinion. And now uh, when things get uh, bad, usually your shell will be there. And if, it, if, if it's not, you'll have uh, worse problems. So you can um, be happy that at least it could, like uh, there, is, there would be nothing else you could do if you get to the point in which the shell doesn't get you where you wanna go. So we already established that this is a good thing. You can call me lazy, I still think I'm smart. My mom said so. And um, so let's talk about the solution we got. At the time that was one of uh, the big ones that were not huge appliances. That was two, two and a half years ago. I don't think it has changed much. Logging is a weird beast in IT, it seems. Like I said, it's the purgatory, right? Um, everybody says it's important, but no one actually thinks it's important. Usually you think, oh, that would be nice to have. Would. Until you need it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's not a lesson we usually learn, usually, right? So again, one of the beautiful things of keeping things simple is you just do it. It's easy, too easy even. Like uh, when something is important, but not really, it's the kind of thing you let uh, go. But if it's easy enough, you just, you know, go ahead and do it and be done and it's all there. Ironically enough, preparing this presentation, I ended up setting up for myself because it was almost too easy not to, so it's running now. I mean, I'll probably leave it there. Why not? It works. So there are two Fluent Ds. There is the Fluent um, D, the original one, which is, um, this thing is uh, some folks in Japan, and it's uh, interesting, it's different. Like the documentation is very precise, very comprehensive. Um, a, bit, a bit confusing at times because they do want you to dive deep. But if you do, it's all there and everything works. But they started with FluentD, the main one. And uh, I mean, I con don't consider it heavy, but um, at one point there was a demand for something even less, uh, even slimmer. So they made uh, what they call Fluent Bit, which due to the whole containerization thing, now seems to be the one that everybody wants. So top one, FluentD, a little heavier. More plugins though, which may be important depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And uh, FluentBit is the slimmer one, which um, is touted as more performant and uh, less resource intensive, not as many plugins. Any questions so far? 
No. no. Okay. We're gonna use Fluent D because uh, that's what the one I picked. I have no opinions one way or another. Fluent Bit could, but I mean, it's very likely to do what we are doing because I'm not using many features, if any, really. Everything is bundled. I'm not using any plugins. So Fluent Bit would probably fit the build, but the config file is slightly different. Nothing crazy. I could actually try and work with it, but um, I had a pretty nice setup that I wanted to show with Fluent D, so I just picked that. Again, any box from hell, 20 years even, 20 years ago would run Fluent D, no problems. Okay, so pretty straightforward. I'm just want to like something everyone here can use, but always remember. Uh, there is a huge pl plugin ecosystem here, and um, you can, on the very same spot where you set up this aggregation, you can from there forward anywhere you want. Another thing I would like to mention, which may be interesting to some folks, the setup I, my, I, I had at my workplace was I would uh, have, which I'll show here, I will just hold this thought because I will go back to that, okay? Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> I'm trying to find the shell. Three. Uh -huh. Okay. So is this being shared? At, um, yep. at uh, okay, great. So we shall begin. All right. So it all begins, uh, I'm not going to show the steps, but they are first straightforward. go to uh, fluentd.org and download the package for distribution, uh, .deb, .rpm, they're all there, just um, DNF install or APT install, like um, it's really not a rocket science. That, uh, that wasn't the case back in the day, um, you kind of had to get a tarball. Not the end of the world, really, but um, now it's uh, packaged and everything makes it really practical. The, um, the binaries go to OPT um, Fluent. Just a um, historical um, tidbit, it used to be called TD Agent because the name of the company is, if I recall correctly, Treasure Data. So it was TD Agent and TD Agent Bit. But now it's Fluent D, Fluent and Fluent Beat. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do here is I set this box up as the collector. Now I only have, I mean, it's everything I have is at my house. So there is no reason for me to like do any kind of pulling. But uh, there is the option if uh, something you need, you can set it up any way you wish. So I'll start by showing the config file. Hey. Basically, you have the sources, which is where are your logs coming from. And here, I'm matching a tag that I have on the other file that I'll show up next and doing a few things with it. So here, the sources are like, uh, okay, so where it's coming from? Now, I will open another one here because that makes it easy to I decided that I would uh, bind on TCP and UDP and also IPv4 and IPv6. That's why I have four of the same. The only thing that changes is the transport and the binding. To, I didn't want to repeat the exact same thing in all those, so I did the include of the same thing. Here, I'm saying that I'm receiving syslogs on this port and uh, these are features of the syslog uh, plugin. Uh, more information can be found on their page. 
But uh, basically, uh, there are two kinds of RFCs, like two, uh, two RFCs for syslog, RFC something and something else. Some people here may be familiar with that. The RFC for syslog uh, format. Well, that's a thing. I, that's how I discovered I didn't know. But uh, you can specify one or the other, but uh, auto takes care of everything. I like auto. Again, I'm lazy. This thing here is, um, is a little um, tidbit I use, and I'll show up uh, later. This is, this is because of uh, something we are doing down here on this side, which is I have a little buffer that is uh, for this particular box it's not really useful it is useful for the puller that I will uh, mention in a bit but the main thing is here when I the, the way I set this up I Each and every day, I have a folder with uh, the date. So this is basically telling it to like receive on these sources and dump everything on this path. And this is year, month, and date. And inside, I want a folder with the host. So when you come here, let's say 030, oh, 03 and 05, that's today. I set up a few boxes to dump them, to send them here. Now, how did I do that? And again, <coughs> I wanted to keep this simple, so what I did was, let's go to this guy. What's here that I can use to do that? I don't want to install anything. I'm lazy. So if you're using a Red Hat based uh, distribution, at the very end of our syslog.conf, these lines are all commented out. Like, you can just uncomment them and change this last line to point to the box you're running it. If uh, that's not clear, let me show it on a box that I didn't uh, change. Oh. That's how it comes by default. So I literally didn't even have to copy and paste that. That's already there. Again, lazy. Very lazy. I basically uncommented these and changed the last line to point to my Fluent D box. Yeah, it's way up there. I noticed that too. The, uh, it's where the action. It's funny they allow a multi line stanza. Like, uh, okay, let's. Uh, oh. Just for funsies here. This box is called Mirror. It's not there yet. Uh, I'm, it may be important to say that I, of course, open all the ports on my firewall, so... Another thing I should mention, again, this is all default, but the beauty of this configuration that comes by default on enter enterprise Linux-based distributions, not Debian, from what I've seen, is that when you reboot, it uh, makes a little uh, cache and then dumps everything when it uh, sees network. So you don't lose even, even the uh, shutdown and boot uh, messages. This can come in handy, and it's all by default. So you do that, and you save. And I will now quickly come back here to show you all that uh, this box isn't here. Okay, I have three files. Those are three uh, of my machines. Actually, one of those is a switch. 
but again, syslog is syslog. And I literally go Oh, it's there. I didn't even see it coming. That's all I had to do to make the logs show up here. And from now on, they are here. And I can do whatever with them. One of the things we can do, um, I'll see if I can uh, find them if I have time, but uh, of course you can reorder this any way you want. For example, uh, here you can see that the time is redundant because it shows up here, but that was an option I made because um, if you want to just um, use this column, you can. There is an incantation here that I did um, if you want to like keep an eye on a specific machine. So for example, if I come here, I can see what's going on in real time. Another thing that can be very useful is, um, let's say, if you have a site, let's say two data centers and you lose the connection between them, you can set up a FluentD to each site to create an aggregator. Everything goes to that box. And then this box, when it sees the other one, it goes and drops everything there. I didn't set that up because I don't need it, but um, I could potentially do that. Let me see if I can show. Just a moment, I'll see if I can find you what I'm talking about. If you want a box that uh, is, let's say, on a different site, you can do the exact same thing, but here, at the bottom, you can forward instead of uh, having type file. So you're still buffering it, just so you have a little, in case you lose connection, you have a place to store it in the meantime. But here, and now let me show it side by side for comparison. I'm sending to this guy and at the top here I would have a source that receives it and here would be dumped into file. But uh, with uh, this simple setup where I open a few ports with the plugin syslog. Let me take those out of here because this is a little bit uh, confusing. With these two here, you can dump it uh, You can dump it to disk on that format. So you have a folder for every day. 
with uh, however many of your machines you can set up our syslog with just that simple setup and you get all your logs in one place and from here if you go to um, to the website you can actually have outputs that you not only save it to disk but you could have different uh, places to send it to let's say Grafana or whatever you can parse them you can change let's say there are plugins for Apache where you can try and extract a few things you don't necessarily need to do everything just uh, using syslog but that was a quick way that I found to get everything on a single spot there are a few details here that um, that you can do to like uh, with this thing with this um, filter uh, session it's what they call record transformer you can massage this um, you can massage this um, just a moment I'm just gonna show what I mean but um you can change it uh, to a different format for example so wait a moment doesn't look like it worked or did it yeah it did it did so let's say here Just for the sake of example, And with that, in let's say 15 minutes, you get all your logs in a box set up by day. And now uh, from here, let's see if I can find uh, a few other things I can show that you can do to um, get them to different places.
Is that uh, where is it? Huh. Wait. It's running away from me. Another example where you receive them and you send them to Elasticsearch using a plugin. Any questions? So is that plugin built in or do you have to, is that like a third party thing? I think this one, let me take a look. I do not remember. Because again, I set this up so long ago that uh, for the plugin situation, I really don't remember. But I can take a look at right now. Zoom data outputs. It seems to be built in. Oh, interestingly enough, they actually have um, a recipe on their website for that, if that's what you're looking for. But uh, yeah, the plugin. No, you have to download, but um, it's a Ruby gem, so it's a little a one liner to install it. And, and then, uh, so the at type flag in the block there. Yes. That's, that's how it knows to use Yeah, the actually, uh, the way this works here is if you want to have, for example, here, oh, what did I do? Okay, here. Type, copy, store. If you go back to uh, here, to this one that I set up, um, is this the one? No, that's a different one. Let me take this out of the way. You see here you have a store block. You could uh, potentially just uh, copy and paste it uh, here at the bottom. And then you would have both the file and send it to somewhere else. Because you're doing the match there for syslog. And uh, syslog is how I tagged the, the block right here. So do they call, like the, where it says type copy, do they call copy a plugin as well? Or is that a separate built-in thing that's different? No, that's like an operation kind of thing. Let's see if I can, because uh, uh, there's source, there's type for the source, but this is uh, when the block is match. It's what they call um, the output plugin. So um, just um, and that's why I have uh, multiple places I can take it to. So they do call it a plugin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of those are built in. Others you have to install. Like uh, the ones that uh, come with it are here. So um, for example, and it's structured by like. Um, Input, so for example, you can have um, a receiver that's like an HTTP um, port right. that you can send using post and stuff like that. We are using for this, uh, as an example here, the syslog, which talks syslog, so I open that port and I'm receiving those. But another one I set up, for example, at my workplace was this one, which is uh, fun. I strongly recommend everyone who is sane to stay away from it. Because uh, Event Viewer, 
Event Viewer can use all of your storage in a day if you leave, if you let it. But uh, yes, it does work. So those are the um, the input uh, plugins are the ones that are taking logs. Like you set up FluentG to receive things, and there are different ways to do that. We use syslog. We could you have an HTTP endpoint where you would uh, just send something to like register that uh, has happened. This one is the one you use uh, when you have uh, the forwarder that I mentioned because it's like talking FluentD to FluentD. So I set up a TCP endpoint that uh, receives from another FluentD instance. So I can set up an intermediary that's going to buffer the logs on a particular side to be dumped on the main one, for example. But there are many examples here, but um, and they all those are where you receive things. And here is how you dump. For example, with the forward plugin, I send to another node. So when you have an aggregator, you set an input of syslog, for example, and then you set up an output that goes to another FluentD instance that has a TCP and then uses, let's say, copy to store it on the disk. But uh, here is where you have uh, plugins such as these where not only I can store on disk, but if I'm feeling fancy, I can send it somewhere else. And with the filter and parser, for example, I was trying to show how to like trim up that uh, message, syslog message uh, to whatever else. If you don't want to get the raw JSON-ish thing there, you can massage it. I do not know why it's not working. It was working when I left this uh, too, too long ago, but it uh, turned out to be a mistake because uh, uh, the folks at my workplace like the JSON better because um, there are lots of tools that help you parse that. So it's not a problem like I thought it would be at the time. I didn't realize that. And uh, another plugin I mentioned here and pass, but um, you can buffer. So when you set up a forwarder, you pull the logs and dump them somewhere else. But if the connection is severed, you can wait. You hold and wait. You can set up like a use up to four, 40 gigabytes of space waiting for this connection to come back or wait seven days and then start dumping logs in the trash if you can't see the other end. And um, so between the different nodes and the different inputs and outputs, there are lots of ways you can massage uh, this to do whatever you want. And uh, the beauty of it is that you can basically use a single application that when you have it in like a few places, you can just point everything to it. And uh, between all the plugins and everything, you can, you can get it where you wanna go. And for example, there are a few recipes here And one of them, this wasn't here. Oh God, you guys. I remember having to figure all that out. That sucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always the way it works. Yeah, I know, right? But uh, yeah, for example here, oh, that's cool. Um, you can uh, try, for example, one thing I was, uh, I was going to do and I didn't have time is um, if, um, if you take a good look at it, you see 99% of uh, of the messages on the logs are system D saying, hi, I'm here, I exist. I'm sure it feels very important, but uh, that's a good way to waste a lot of disk space. So you can, with a filter, just parse it out. Or maybe some of it out, because um, if you go back here, you see that, that these messages are, they come uh, to this box with the syslog level that they have. <clears throat> mm. 
right here. So I, you can filter like debug, I don't need it. Off, that's what I care about. Or let's say I can parse by here, system D. Don't want anything with it. Or only want system D that's of a specific uh, severity instead of like all the stuff. And again, pretty easy to massage on that, uh, on that uh, config file. And when you do it, because all of your machines are dumping raw syslog, you do the parsing on, the, on a centralized location. And uh, there are a few plugins to like further um, parse, let's say, Nginx log messages and things like that that may be needed for specific uh, workloads. Uh, at my workplace, uh, there is a, I think it's called Vector for uh, containers. That's what we are using for, because uh, container logs tend to be very ephemeral, right? So it just started pointing everything there, just to dump it somewhere, that in case some deployment goes crazy for whatever reason, we at least can try and trace it back using the raw logs from the container, instead of trying to go to the, to the manager, and um, more often than not, they are not even there anymore. At least that was uh, our experience there. But with that, we managed to like trace them back and try and fetch some information to see what's going on. So this this has everything to make it uh, like as complicated as possible. But it's totally something you can make your life significantly better just by five minutes of setup and like literally one port open on your firewall. Uh, no, there is no authentication. It's basically TCP. I'm pretty sure there is a way to make this a lot fancier. But um, it works, it works well, and it was very quick uh, to do. And uh, another thing that may be interesting is I, I, I mentioned a few times I set it up and I left it there. And um, it has been collecting all the logs since then, so <laughs> it was funny because we set this up and we kind of forgot about it for a while, and then uh, we had an incident there. When we went back to look, it was there, so it was saved our bacon there. So, any any questions? So it's mostly just an aggregator, and then what you do with it once it's aggregated is entirely up to you and other tools. I mean, I didn't show it because uh, first, it was not my original use case, and second, that would make for a way longer presentation. It could be a different one, actually, but to like, because. Uh, but I mean, basically, what you do here is. Um, it's literally in the config file where if, um, oh God, that's the thing when you use those styling things is you forget to have things. You literally store it somewhere else. I have another block of those with, um, let's say type elastic search and then I send it to elastic search or I can even send it to like a different location, a NAS drive, whatever. Because after it receives us, go to town. Like uh, I can have a few blocks parsing it there. Here uh, it's a syslog down here. I can make another block, uh, another block only for the for the warnings for whatever else. Maybe even have them in a different place. So like um, f after you get them on your all your different sources, and you can have multiple sources then you can massage them, dump them, whatever, all from here. If, or even send it like uh, to a different uh, Fluent instance somewhere else for some other thing. And uh, each of those blocks have a documentation, which again, I, I won't be able, because there is lots it can do. And like, um, to like, uh, for example, this uh, here, I originally, this block was originally made so that I would um, have that buffer I mentioned if I, the site connection was broken. But um, I also wanted to address the fact that uh, if the power goes out suddenly, those can stay in memory for too long. But you also don't want many writes, so this could be a different time, which would be like how 
how many seconds are you willing to to waste if you get a power outage because you don't want to have too many writes on your drive, for example. So this can be as simple as as complicated as you want, yes, but um, it is um, the the main thing is it took me a long time to get it working, and uh, looking back, I realized that uh, this is hard to find something that. Uh, with a config file that turns out to not be that intense, you can just point everything to it using native tooling that's literally running on every Linux box that everyone has, and you already have your logs in one place, and you can do whatever you want with them, like monitor, grab, and uh, and then if you want to like make it any nicer, then it's only a matter of uh, going to the documentation, which again is uh, very, very, very much. Um, comprehensive and um, sometimes a little too much, especially when you're first thing starting out. But you can just uh, quickly take a look here, for example, at the um, mm -hmm. file. That's the one we have been using. This may be useful for some people. What were the other extra plugin types? Those are input, output, and then there was a few more categories. Um, there's the parsing I tried to show, but uh, my incantation wasn't working, which is this one, for example, you can... You can get uh, the record that you're receiving, for example, with syslog and rearrange the, the, right. the different... Um, keys in a different order and um, make it more presentable, for example. Yeah. Take it out of the JSON framework and just have them laid out like system D. And then there's also parser and formatter. Transformer, the formatter, that one I don't recall messing with. This one is for Nginx. Okay, so these look like, I guess, they're kind of just pre-made. Yeah, that, though, there are more than a thousand um, plugins. These, I think, are the built-ins. Or maybe not, but, I mean, I don't know exactly if they're built-in or just the ones they make and you have to install them. But uh, they do have a catalog and there are more than a thousand different ones with like a pre-made parsing and uh, different uh, inputs and everything else. Yeah, this one is massaging the, the lines of Nginx to make it a different layout. Many, many folks are interested in, uh, for example, um, one I explored for a little while was this one, but then we realized the... Um, we like wrapping, so we didn't care much. Mm -hmm. But you can do all that and just add an extra few lines to send it to, um, let's say, Greylog. And then you have a nice little search functionality and everything else. And I mean, you would still keep the setup we just, make. we just made. So you can just, for example, right now, the way we do things is we log it to disk but we send some of the stuff to Elasticsearch for further down the road and a few other things go, I think, to Grafana. And then Grafana chokes, but it's fine because we have them on disk anyway. But uh, yeah, if anyone is interested, I can send this one uh, to get, um, it's a great one to get started because it uh, gets it up and running in a way that uh, you can actually start getting value out of it and then it's only a matter of uh, taking it further because you have all the syslogs. You can have um, inputs for specific things that you may want to send directly or let's say if you have something that you would rather receive through HTTP, like I showed that's another option. But uh, for most uh, people, like right off uh, the bat, even a papai running, just f eating, I mean maybe the SD card wouldn't like that much, but other than that, uh, just something that would receive all the syslog of your machines would uh, 
Did I mention at one point I had um, XFS corruption on my drive? Did I mention this? Uh, your SSD? Is it the same thing as your SSD issue? Uh, <laughs> it was not a... The SSD was fine. Okay. But uh, for some reason, I mean, I've, it's rare that uh, XFS gets corrupted. It should, yeah. Except power outages. I don't know. I don't think that was it. I don't know what happened. I don't remember if I shut it off by mistake or whatever. Point is that uh, the machine would crash before logs would be registered. And uh, the solution for that was I literally had a D message running and I managed to crash the machine because then I would lose the disk from under it, but the uh, in-memory would be there, right? But uh, this is where this kind of thing hel helps because um, the last thing should fall on any Linux box is what's in memory. My firewall at one point, the hard drives both bailed from under it. But the NF table rules were there for days after, until I had time to redo it. It's the same thing. If you have this up and running and anything happens with your, even your storage, you're probably going to receive it. Assume you still have networking, you will be able to see what's going on. And that's uh, more helpful than, than we think until we actually are there. So. Any questions? Anything from the group? No, nothing online. All right, thanks, Alberto.